go ahead and get started with uh, just a, a brief description of tonight's agenda and some housekeeping items about uh, the meeting. First of all, can, can everybody in the panel at least hear me? Nods or shake your head? Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so uh, just a few housekeeping items. Like I said, uh, my name is Dan Power and I'm the planning director. I'll be helping to moderate tonight's meeting. Uh, this is the June 24th virtual uh, Van Buren Township Planning Commission meeting. Uh, this will be live streaming on YouTube and available on uh, our cable as well. So uh, just to go over a few things about how to make public comments, and then I have a, a, a page that describes how to join our meetings in general, uh, just as a reminder of how we get the word out about our public meetings, uh, which we will be doing remotely through the month of July. Uh, so if you're participating tonight, you are, um, and you are not on the planning commission and you are not one of our technical staff uh, or one of the applicants for the Camping World or uh, Atchison temporary land use site, um, you will be participating passively through the webinar, uh, but so that means you, you can't be heard or seen. However, there are ways to participate uh, in, at which point you will be able to be heard and seen during the public comment periods. There is a, uh, the primary way we recommend that you do that is to raise your hand using the raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen. Uh, you, can, uh, you can raise your hand and then we will uh, acknowledge you and you will be asked to say your name and address for the record and make a brief uh, public comment. Another way is to type your comment into the chat window uh, and then your public can be read aloud for our uh, planning commission to see or hear. And then the third way is to, if you're dialing by phone, uh, to press star nine and we can uh, see that you have virtually raised your hand and we'll call on you to speak if you're speaking by phone as well. Um, after the meeting, there will be uh, close, there's closed caption available on YouTube. And uh, we do ask that you are uh, respectful of everyone's uh, time by uh, keeping the comments relatively brief at three minutes or less. Um, I will just share uh, one thing on my screen, which is more generally um, how to participate in our public meetings. So uh, we are still doing the newspaper mailings for, or the newspaper notices for public hearing items. We're still sending notices in the mail for public hearing items. And then of course we are announcing on the website uh, how to join planning commission meetings uh, both on the main web page and on the Planning Commission agendas page. Um, for tonight's agenda, I'll just slide down uh, on the same image here just to go over. Uh, it's a more complicated agenda than we've had recently. We're kind of getting back to a, a typical busy midsummer agenda. Um, so I just want to show kind of the structure of what's on the agenda tonight before I turn it over to our Planning Commission Chair, Carol Thompson. So. Uh, as I'm doing right now, uh, and then as the chair opens up the meeting, there will be an introduction. Uh, we'll call the attendance and go over the, the minutes from the June 10th meeting. Then there will be public hearing items, which there is a public hearing for the Camping World project, which is a special land use, and the C district and related zoning ordinance text amendments. After the public hearings are open and closed, there will be new business related to both of those items where the Planning Commission actually deliberates and makes a decision uh, to approve or recommend approval for the various aspects of those projects. Uh, and then there's a extension of a temporary land use that's being requested on Belleville Road by Etchinson Ford. And then finally, a uh, discussion and a request for your recommendation on uh, what's what I'm calling adaptive outdoor, outdoor retail and seating uh, in the context of the coronavirus situation. So that's our agenda in uh, summary tonight. Um, at this point, I'll stop sharing my screen and we'll go back to typical meeting order where I will kick this over to our Planning Commission Chair, Carol Thompson, and we will proceed as we normally would. Thanks, Dan. Good reminders for everyone too. Um, I'll welcome everyone to the Charter Township of Van Buren Planning Commission meeting for Wednesday, June 24th of 2020. We'll start with a roll call, please. Joan Franzoy? 
Here. Jeff Jar. Here. Donald Boynton. Brian Kelly. Here. Medina Atchison. Here. Sherry Budd. Here. And Carol Thompson. Here. Thank you, Ms. Doring. We have an agenda before us. Um, there's one minor change proposed on the agenda, and that is under the public hearings. We will not have comments from applicant and staff and we'll reserve their time to speak under the new business items. Um, if, you, if you notice, we have um, both public hearings, both have action items later on in the agenda. So we'll just hear the reports from staff and from the applicants. Under the items. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Thanks, Commissioner Franzoy, support. Support. Commissioner Kelly, is that you? Yes. Great, thanks. Hard to tell. Sometimes on Zoom. All right, we have a motion and support. And uh, Ms. Doring, this would be a roll call vote, please. Okay. Medina Atchison? Yes. Okay. Brian Kelly? Yes. Jeff Jahar? Yes. Joan Franzoy? Yes. Terry Budd? Yes. And Carol Thompson? Yes. Thank you. That motion for the agenda approval carries. We will move now to the minutes of uh, June 10th, 2020. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? Motion to approve. Thanks. Ms. Budd, is there support? Commissioner Jar supports. Thanks, Commissioner Jar. Any corrections or changes to the minutes? All right, then, Ms. Dore, it's a roll call vote to approve the June 10th minutes. Okay. Joan Franzoy? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. yes. Medina okay. Atchison? Yes. Sherry Budd? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. We'll move right into the uh, uh, public hearings for tonight's agenda. The first item, item one, is a public hearing for uh, proposed improvements at Camping World. The applicant, Derek Matter, Camping World, is requesting to demolish the east wing of their existing building and create a new RV parking and storage on the site. The site is located at 43646 North Interstate Service Drive. The parcel ID number is 83-060-01-0001-001. It is the north side of the I-94 North Service Drive between DeWitt and Morton Taylor Roads. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? So moved, Commissioner Jar. Commissioner Jar, support. Support, Commissioner Kelly. Commissioner Kelly, support. We have a motion and a support and we'll have a roll call vote, please. Joan Franzoy? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Medina Atchison? Yes. Sherry Budd? Yes. And Carol Thompson? Yes, thank you. So the public hearing for Camping World is now open and our moderator will help us to hear comments from the public. If you'd like to speak to this agenda item, if you would tell us your name and address, and if you would keep your comments specific to this agenda item, there'll be a chance to speak on other items later on in the meeting. Director Powers, do we have any public comments? I do not see any public comments in the chat window, but I do see five attendees for the meeting. I know one is the applicant for the Camping World project and uh, one is Rosemary with the Belleville and Area Independent, and then we have three other attendees. So, um, Mr. and Mrs. Martin, or um, I see a Mark K. If any of you would like to speak on the Camping World project, uh, please feel free to do so and raise your hand using the the uh, icon at the bottom of the screen. I don't see any raised hands. So I think we have no comments on that uh, at this time. 
Great. I do. I, I apologize. I do see uh, that the engineer for the Camping World project has raised his hand. So uh, our uh, other moderators, if you could invite Paul to speak, then we can bring him in. Yeah, Paul, all you have to do is unmute yourself. Um, yep, I think we can hear you. I see that, uh, Paul, you are still muted. There you Any go. Now, folks? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Apologize for the technical difficulties. This is, I've used all the other platforms except for Zoom, so this is my first Zoom experience. But um, just wanted to give a, a quick overview on behalf of uh, – uh, Derek, Mr. Derek Matter and Camping World, uh, just regarding this project. Um, as you are probably aware, this is an existing facility uh, located off the I-94 service drive. And uh, the project involves demolition of a portion of the existing building. Um, and also, essentially, the, the main impetus for, the, for Camping World is uh, to, to do this project is they wanted to repave the parking lot, uh, spruce up things a bit, bring it into compliance in terms of, uh, you know, interior landscape islands, uh, restripe the parking lot. Um, and they also wanted uh, to establish uh, some cordoned off areas to essentially separate what they consider the uh, new RV inventory uh, storage parking and uh, the customer parking at the main entrance. Uh, we're proposing to basically um, repave the, you know, the entire parking lot with a few minor uh, geometry revisions from what's out there, uh, restripe, and um, just make a couple, um, a couple utility improvements also that involve a, uh, there's a, a propane station and also a, a sanitary uh, dump station for the RVs to utilize. So um, I guess with that in mind, um, we'll take any questions and uh, if there's any other questions or comments, we'd be more than happy to respond to. Great, thanks so much. We'll see if there's anything else for the public hearing. And then of course, there'll be another chance to speak um, when we go back to the business agenda item for Camping World. So any other public comments? I do see a new uh, phone number on the line. There's a 651 area code phone number. Um, so uh, whoever that is, if you'd like to make a public hearing comment related to the Camping World project, uh, you can press star nine. But if you are associated with the project team or with uh, if you're looking to speak on the uh, zoning ordinance text amendments, that will be a little later in the agenda. So if that is the case, you can just hang tight. I, th I think that was Mr. Derek Matter. I think that's his area code, so I'm not sure if he needs to wanted to add anything to what I said, but he was jumping on a little bit late was my understanding, so. Okay. Thank you. Um, I do, uh, I do see another uh, question. Um, and yeah, this that's is the, unrelated. Okay, thank you. With that, I think that all the questions uh, regarding the Camping World project uh, have been addressed. I don't see any other hands raised, so we can move on. Great, thanks, Director Powers. In that case, I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved, this is Medina Atchison. Support Commissioner thanks, John. Commissioner Atchison, support. Commissioner Jar, support. And there'll be a roll call vote, please. Joan Franzoy. Yes. Jeff Jar. Yes. Brian Kelly. Yes. Medina Atchison. Yes. Sherry Bud. Yes. And Carol Thompson. Yes. Thank you. Moving right into our next public hearing, item two is a public hearing for zoning ordinance amendments in C local business district amendments. The proposed amendments are to add clarifications 
in order to distinguish commercial and residential and non-commercial land uses in the C local business district with respect to maximum building size and clarifying restrictions on dwellings in non-residential zoning districts. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? So move. Commissioner Boynton, support? Support, Commissioner Kelly. Thanks, Commissioner Kelly. And we'll have a roll call vote, please. Um, Joan Franzoy? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Medina Atchison? Yes. Sherry Budd? Yes. And Carol Thompson? Yes. So the public hearing is now open. Um, it'll be similar to the last public hearing. We will um, uh, ask anyone who'd like to speak to this agenda item to please tell us your name and address. And if you would keep your comments specific to this item, there'll be a chance to speak on other items later in the meeting. And our moderators are here to help you make your public comment. So we'll open it up for public comment now. Excuse me, I had my mute on. I see a hand raised from Lisa Mark. So moderators could unraise that hand and allow Mrs. Martin to speak. Yep, uh, Mrs. Martin, you can speak whenever you're free. Thank you. Uh, my name is Lisa Martin and I live at nine. But we lost, and I don't know what happened there, but we lost the volume on Lisa, there we go. It seems to be back. I apologize. That's okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. My name is Lisa Martin and I live at 9405 Madison Drive. Based on the potential impact that the requested change to section 105 would bring, I'm sorry, section 3.105 would bring to my backyard, I wanted to speak about what appears to be an attempt to try to change the zoning ordinance to benefit a specific parcel of land. Uh, the discussion at the last meeting indicated that the suggested clarifications were needed to section 105 um, and weren't about a specific piece of property, but that's not true. Before and during the January 8, 2020 public meeting of the Planning Commission, I raised the issue of size restrictions of parcels in the areas that are zoned C local business district. During that meeting, the response provided is that the proposed project was permissible under the special land use provisions of the zoning ordinances. Now this body is being advised that a 348 page zoning ordinance, the size limitation should be considered a point of conflict that was overlooked. I looked at the size limitations on, I looked at and located the size limitations the first time I looked at the zoning ordinances and found it to be consistent with the statement of purpose included in the ordinance for C local. The statement of purpose for C local in section 3.110 provides that the local business district intended to permit retail business and service uses which are needed to serve nearby residential areas. That statement leads to an examination of the eight areas of the township that are zoned C local and the finding that only three of these parcels are not developed in any appreciable fashion. And those three parcels would be impacted by the removal of the size restrictions that appear both in section 3.105 footnotes and 3.110. Two of these properties are one of them is 0 0.7 acres and the other one is 1.7 acres. If you look at the subsec, the first subsection of section 3.105 B2B, the section that this body is being asked to change, that subsection provides that a building under the subsection shall only be located on the site not less than three acres in area. As these two properties are under that three acre minimum, they're not even up for consideration of being impacted by the changes sought. That leaves one parcel, and that's the parcel located at Morton Taylor and Tyler. That brings me back to my original point of sounding the alarm over any clarification that is targeted to this single property. The inclusion of the size limitation is not something that was overlooked, nor should it be deemed a conflict in the clarification. That language provided in both sections 3.105 and 3.110 were available to the drafters of the zoning, zoning ordinances that were adopted in 2017 and amended in 2019. Those people had the opportunity to review the parcels of the township, dissect existing ordinances with any restrictions and still decide to leave in the language that set the purpose of C-Local to serve nearby 
residential areas and limit the size of any building in that district, whether the building had one use or more, whether permitted by right or special use, or whether you called it residential type or commercial. There are no semantic gymnastics needed tonight. And before you make a decision about any recommendation to the Board of Trustees in this matter, I would implore each of you to go to West Bridge Estates at Canton and look at removing the size limitations will potentially bring the C local business district parcels of Van Buren Township. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Martin. Other public comments? I'll give it a moment, but I do not see any hand, hand raise uh, icons yet or any new questions regarding this in the chat window yet. That appears to be the, uh, the only uh, comment. In that case, I'll ask for a motion to close this public hearing. So moved. Commissioner Boynton, support. Mr. Atchison, support. Commissioner Atchison, and a roll call vote, please, Ms. Doring. Okay. Joan Franzoy? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Donald Boynton? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Medina Atchison? Yes. Sherry Budd? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. Thank you. So that concludes our public hearings for tonight. We will move directly into new business. Item one is the Camping World Special Land Use Approval. The applicant, Derek Matter, Camping World is seeking a special land use permit, <coughs> pardon me, to demolish the east wing of their existing building and create new RV parking and storage on the site. The site is located at 43646 North Interstate Service Drive uh, it's tax parcel ID 8306001 and it is on the north side of the I-94 North Service Drive between DeWitt and Morton Taylor Roads. And we'll start first with the presentation by the applicant. Mr. Matter or the engineer. If I can, uh, through the chair, uh, just quickly mention, I'm not sure if I, uh, if I clarified this, but at this point, um, Mr. Matter or Mr. Tulakangas, if you want to make other comments about your project, or even if you have something you'd like to share on the screen, just let us know and we can share your, uh, share your material materials with the planning commission. Um, so I, I just got a text message from Derek, uh, Derek Matter here that uh, he's on the, on the call via phone. So I'm not sure if he's going to be able to, uh, I'm not sure if uh, there's a communication issue there. Um, I kind of accidentally jumped ahead and did the overview during the public hearing, I think. <laughs> so I'm not That's sure. That's okay. Uh, That's all right. It's good to get, <laughs> us, get us rolling in the right direction. So is there anything you'd like to add or, or review with us at this time? Um, I think, um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Ms. Krishnan has a, a presentation that I think will kind of cover it and, and reiterate the overview that I already provided. Um, so I guess we're just mainly here to, to see if there's any questions or concerns or anything else that needs to be discussed. All right, that sounds great. This won't be the last time for you to speak. If there are questions or comments after we hear the staff reviews, then we'll come back to you. So in that case, Director Powers, anything that you have for us or are we going directly to McKenna's review? Uh, sure, I, I will end up providing a quick overview and then to McKenna, but I think I heard uh, somebody ask if they could be heard. So Mr. Matter, are you? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that you could hear me. I do, I do not have a microphone or camera on my PC, but I am calling in and I can see what is happening. So there, if there are any questions or Anything that I can add to the conversation, I'm, I am certainly able to do that. Great, thanks, Mr. Matter. All right, Director Powers, floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So I have the screen open right now, so uh, bear with me. I'll try not to uh, move around too quickly here, but I wanted to, uh, maybe I'll 
stop it just for a moment and get a little bit closer on the site. I just want to provide a little bit of um, orientation to the site. And then uh, I have the site plan available for view, which we can view well the uh, planning consultant and the township engineer um, speak about the project in more detail. Um, so here is just to orient us to the site. Here is the um, location. We are on the north side of the North I-94 service drive west of Morton Taylor Road. This is an image that uh, apparently was taken in 2019. However, it's uh, prior to that there was some uh, regrading and some gravel around that time. So uh, it's not quite quite current, but this gives you some orientation to the site and where it's located. Um, this is a more current image, not, not much to look at here, but it's just showing two different views looking um, southwest out uh, beyond the southwest corner of the site and then northeast toward the store and the uh, RV parking and sales area and the customer's parking area. Uh, moving down, I'm going to just zoom out at this point because I'd like to just show the overall plan uh, before we move over to the planning consultant. Uh, to speak about this in, in greater detail. So just one moment here. So this is the site plan. Uh, as mentioned, the, the east wing of the building um, will be replaced with diagonal uh, our uh, recreational vehicle parking, um, new, new inventory, uh, and there is parking for these vehicles and sales of these vehicles on the east side of the site, as well as on the west side of the site. Uh, those areas are secured and there's also uh, customer access into the center of the site through the main driveway there. Uh, I also have available for view the landscaping plan for the project, as well as a marked up version of the site plan uh, corresponding to some of the comments from the planning consultant uh, so if we need to get a little bit closer to uh, those comments when she's describing her report, we can do that. And that's also in your packet. But uh, this, the project has been summarized in general and the applicants have stated their comments on the project. So uh, at this point, I'll just explain the uh, kind of the two part aspect to this. This is a special land use, the, um, the sale of these vehicles as a special land use, which required the public hearing. So there's a consideration of the special land use, which gets forwarded to the township board for consideration. And then there's a separate consideration for approval of the preliminary site plan. So there will be comments from staff on both items. Uh, the planning consultant has comments on the special land use request. And that's what I will ask uh, for her to review right now. So uh, with no further ado, we'll, we'll turn this over to Vidya Krishnan. Thank you, Director Powers. Uh, May I suggest that we have just the aerial on and not the site plan because the special land use refers to uh, more uh, subjective and objective criteria than actually site improvements. Adding to what the chairperson said, the site is zone C2, which is extensive highway business district, and the ordinance permits outdoor vehicle sales and vehicle service minor as a special land use in the C2 district. There are specific standards in the zoning ordinance for review and consideration of any special land use request. I'll summarize these in brief. Camping World is an existing business at the site and has been there for a long time. The site plan at this time involves improvements and changes to improve the viability of the business. Therefore, we find that the use will continue to promote the use of land in a socially and economically desirable manner. Any impacts that could possibly result from the site improvements on adjacent properties are mitigated through landscaping and screening, which I will review at the time of site plan uh, review further down in this meeting. Um, it is necessary for public convenience at this location. Um, with regard to compatibility with adjacent land uses, there is an existing commercial strip with multiple uses, which is an auto glass repair shop, a marine supply store, an auto appliance repair store to the east of the subject site, and the parcel to the west, north are both vacant. A similar business, National RV Detroit, is located just further west. So the use is compatible to the adjacent uses where it is currently located. The proposed site change involves improvements to site landscaping and circulation patterns, which we believe will enhance 
public health, safety, and welfare. We do not anticipate that the proposed site improvements will affect the site's current public service capacity. They are working with the township engineers in order to resolve any utility issues. The proposed site improvements will not cause injury to other properties in the neighborhood in which it is to be located. No trees are proposed to be removed as part of the site improvement plan. In fact, several trees and shrubs are being added to enhance and improve the landscape on the site. Camping World is within the provisions of uses that require special land use approval and is in harmony with the purpose and conforms to the regulations of the C2 districts and meets applicable design standards as a special land use. The proposed outdoor vehicle sales use and minor vehicle repair is related to a valid exercise of the township's police power and the purposes which are affected by the proposed use or activity. In addition to these general standards for review of a special land use, there are specific standards for vehicle storage, and I shall go over those. The first requirement is that all vehicles in an outdoor sales lot shall be operable. So the applicant has verified that all the vehicles that are in the outdoor sales lot will be operable. Any inoperable vehicles or those that are undergoing minor repairs will be housed within the service garage indoors and not parked outside. The second requirement is that the use shall meet all applicable requirements of the ordinance as regards to lot surfacing, drainage, protective curbing, and adequate means of ingress and egress. With regard to the vehicle circulation and curbing, we have discussed this further in our site plan review letter, and the actual site drainage is subject to review by the township's engineer. The ordinance requires access to the outdoor sales area shall be at least 100 feet from the intersection of any two streets. The standard two is met. The outdoor sales area is more than 100 feet from the intersection of I-94 North Service Drive and Morton Taylor Road, and almost 838 feet from North Service Drive and Belleville Road intersection. The applicant has included a note of clarification on the site plan that no major repair or refinishing will be done on the slot because it is prohibited. The ordinance requires that motor homes, mobile homes, or other large vehicles shall not be displayed in the front yard unless the vehicle is new and the applicant has added the required note to the site plan. All lighting proposed on the site is required to comply with the ordinance and to be shielded from adjacent parcels and the, any residentially used or zoned parcels. The site does not abut any residentially used or zoned parcels, so the standard is met. The ordinance requires an obscuring wall or fence five feet in height and of fire resistant construction along the lot lines which abut districts that are zoned for residential use. Now, once again, the site does not abut any residential use or zone, so the standard is not applicable. However, we have reviewed other fence standards in our site plan review uh, letter. The final requirement is that a permanent enclosed office for records and supervision is required on the same site. This can be met provided we just need confirmation with a floor plan that such an office designated area is located within the portion of the building that is to be retained. Now, the other special land use specific criteria is for minor vehicle uh, service. There are two specific conditions required. First is that service stations and commercial garages shall be located at least 500 feet from any entrance or exit to a lot, which is a school, a playground, a play field, or a park. And this standard is met. Uh, Tyler Elementary is the closest school and it's northeast of this site at a distance of approximately 1.25 miles. And the minimum frontage on any one public street has to be 150 feet. And the site has over 783 feet of frontage onto the North Service Drive. We believe at this time the general standards for consideration of special land use approval have been met. And with regard to the specific standards, with the exception of one note related to outdoor storage, all of the standards have been met. So it is our recommendation that the Planning Commission recommend to the Township Board of Trustees approval of special land use for Camping World, subject to the submission of a floor plan to verify the provision of a permanent enclosed office, and that all of the site plan approval conditions are I would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks, Ms. Christman. Questions or comments from the commission for staff or for the applicants? I 
I will ask the applicant if um, either Mr. Matter or Mr. Tulip Kangas, if I didn't murder your name, um, if you can answer the question about the intention to keep an office space in the um, existing building. Yeah, I can answer that. We do have several offices within the within the building for for sales staff, uh, accounting staff, etc. So, simply yes. Thanks, Mr. Matter. Planning commissioners, questions or comments? Through the chair. Sure, Commissioner Bud. Um, Dan, were you able to get an answer to number six, where the applicant added that RVs would not be displayed in the front yard? That's a very good question that uh, we may also discuss during the preliminary site plan section, but uh, okay. the requirement is that uh, only new inventory can be stored in the front yard. And, and I believe that was the clarification that needs to be made. The note may, uh, then that's a question that we should ask the applicant if they intended to say that no used inventory would be stored in the front yard. Because right now, yep not finished by any means, but when you go by there now, there's used vehicles and a mixture of everything in the front of the building. Hey, Dan, I, I, I would say it is our, it is our intention to absolutely display the new units front and center on the drive side of the property. Uh, I think being able to demo, demo that building would allow us to push any stage service vehicles to the rear of the property and, and until they have an opportunity to get inside the building. But uh, the intention is to, for us to be able to display more new inventory and, and uh, to be a successful business, we absolutely want to have our best and brightest units up uh, on the front side. Thank you, sir. Other questions or comments from the commission? Yeah, this is uh, Paul Tulikangas here. I just had a question for Mr. Power. Uh, Dan, is it, I guess, can you point out the note that you're referring to uh, or, or just tell me which sheet it's on maybe? Cause I'm looking at our sheet C1 and we have, uh, we have special land use requirements notes and we state the only vehicles allowed to be displayed within the front yard shall be new vehicles. That, that, is, that sounds like an accurate interpretation of the ordinance. So uh, we can, that's actually a note from our, uh, I think the second report on the preliminary site plan. So okay, clarify that. Um, and I think it sounds like we're uh, working toward the same answer on that issue. So uh, that sounds, yeah. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that more during a preliminary site plan. All right, anyone in the audience, comments or questions? Director Powers, are you hearing from anyone? I see no additional uh, chat items or hands raised at this time. All right for the question of special land use for Camping World. If there's nothing else from the commission, is there a motion to recommend? Madam Chair. Mayor Kelly. I'd move to recommend special land use uh, permit approval for Camping World for the location or the site location at 43646 North Interstate Service Drive, based on the, the analysis and subject to the conditions detailed in the June 18th, 2020 uh, McKenna letter. Thank you, support? Support. Commissioner Jar, support. I'll take Commissioner Atchison's support, thank you. And so the motion is to, a recommendation to Township Board, and that's a roll call vote, please. Joan Franzoy. Yeah. Yes. Jeff Jar. Yes. Donald Boynton. Yes. Brian Kelly. Yes. Medina Atchison. Yes. Sherry Bud. Yes. Carol Thompson. Yes. Thank you. So that recommendation goes forward now to the township board. 
And we will stay with Camping World and our agenda and move to their item two, which is an application seeking preliminary site plan approval for Camping World. Uh, they are demolishing the east wing of their existing building and creating a new RV parking and storage. The site is located at 43646 North Interstate Service Drive, same parcel tax number, still on the north side of the I-94 North Service Drive between DeWitt and Morton Taylor Roads. And I'll ask the applicant before we hear recommendations from staff and professionals, if they have anything they'd like to add um, in their presentation on site. Anything, gentlemen? All right, hearing nothing, I'm gonna go right to uh, Director Powers for any overview that he has, and then we'll hear um, from Ms. Krishnan from McKenna's recommendation. Sure, thank you. So um, I have no additional uh, detailed overview of the site plan. That is something I will uh, defer to our uh, planner, Vidya Krishnan, as well as our township engineer on. Um, and I have to just clarify a uh, minor error. The comment on the front yard uh, new vehicle inventory was in fact in the special land use report, but uh, I feel that it is also satisfactorily addressed from, uh, from the last section. But we are, you are more than welcome to uh, ask about that as well during uh, the preliminary site plan review because that's all related. Um, but I think the standard was clarified during that last section. So I apologize that that was in a different part of the report um, from what I said. But uh, at this point, I would like to just, uh, again, make available the site plan uh, and have a diagram showing um, some of the detailed site plan comments from our planning consultant on display. Uh, and I'll, I'll uh, kind of follow her lead. And then if we want to zoom in on anything in particular, we can do that. Thank you, Director Powers. If I may proceed. Please go right ahead, Ms. Krishnan. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Some of the details of this project have already been discussed under the special land use. So I will summarize all the site plan review details at this time. The site, as I mentioned, is zone C2, extensive highway business district, and the ordinance permits outdoor vehicle sales and vehicle service minor as a special land use. There is the site has a total area of 8.79 acres. There is no minimum lot size requirement in the C2 district. The minimum required setbacks are 35 feet, 20 feet, and 25 feet. And the building as it stands complies with the ordinance setbacks. The maximum permitted building height in the C2 district is four stories or 40 feet. The existing height is 22 feet for the portion of the building that is being retained. And it is within the maximum permissible limit. With regard to access and circulation, now the site can be accessed by an existing curb cut of North Service Drive. It's about 43.9 feet in width. It is adequate, it is extra wide because it needs enough room to accommodate RV turn radius. And the width is adequate. Ingress and egress lanes have been striped and directional markings are shown on the site plan. The applicant has noted that the emergency vehicle access plan has been revised to reflect changes to the parking lot layout. Now this emergency access plan is subject to review and approval both by the township engineer and by the fire department. With regard to cross access, the site plan does not propose any cross access with the adjacent properties. As I mentioned, to the west and to the north, there are currently vacant lots and to the east is another uh, commercial parcel. For the applicant, Cross access is not being proposed due to numerous feasibility issues, including the fact that they have RV inventory and it's a fenced and gated facility for security. Offering cross access to the adjacent properties defeats the whole purpose of trying to secure the site. Uh, we do acknowledge that a facility such as this does need to be secured. Um, so cross access is not feasible. The ordinance recommend when feasible to provide it. In this case, it is not. With regard to sidewalks, the site has an existing sidewalk along its service drive frontage, which has been shown and labeled on the plans. A new perpendicular sidewalk is also shown going all the way to the front entrance of the building. Uh, a crosswalk is proposed right off 
the main uh, access drive, and that connects via a paver walkway all the way to the building, another crosswalk to enter. So if somebody should happen to walk to this facility, which I'm not sure anybody would do if they're going shopping for an RV, but if there is a need for pedestrian access, it is being provided as a full connecting path. With regard to parking and loading, customer parking spaces are dimensioned as required by the ordinance and will be double striped as required. The site plan also includes nine 12 foot by 60 foot RV customer parking spaces in front of the building, which are double striped. The east and west areas of the site are also designated for RV parking and as required, they have also been double striped. With regard to number of parking spaces based on the ordinance requirement for a service stall and for the interior showroom uh, space, uh, a total of 80 parking spaces are required. The site plan provides for a total of 82 spaces. This includes four handicap accessible spaces, which meets the requirement for ADA rules. As to loading, two usable loading spaces, 10 feet by 50 feet each are required. Both of those are shown dimensioned on the north side of the building, which is in at the back. One is in a recessed area and one is in an at-grade area, and it satisfies the requirement. The paving plan proposes perimeter curbing at all pavement edges and landscaping within the customer parking areas. They are requesting a waiver from the Planning Commission for installing perimeter curb installations within the RV parking and inventory area. Now the ordinance section 9.104 requires concrete curbs to be provided and maintained around all parking areas, including where parking spaces abut, landscaping, property lines, or required setbacks. Well, the applicant has given their own reasoning for why they don't want to provide the curbing, because according to them, uh, it is in the interest of engineering and the site grading that they would not provide curbing and allow the site to uh, sheet flow. The Planning Commission has the discretion to approve an alternative design when there is a possibility that such a proposal would substantially improve water quality of the site. At this time, we have seen no information or no explanation showing that foregoing the curb will actually improve water quality from the site. I would defer to the township's engineer in order to make the determination. If such a determination cannot be made that the water quality is substantially improved, the curbing needs to be put in place. With regard to landscaping and screening, the ordinance have extensive requirement for landscaping adjacent to the public right of way, which is along the service drive within the parking lot within the interior parking lot landscape islands, for the loading area on the north, the display areas buffering, green belt buffering along all property lines, all of those requirements that are specific calculations, number of trees, number of shrubs required, and the site plan at this time complies with all those requirements. Now this site is also in the C2 district, which has got its own specific parking requirements. The applicant has provided all of this. The one detail that they still uh, have to provide is there is an area shown the brick walkway that connects from the public sidewalk, which is perpendicular to the service drive entering to the building. The plan shows benches and a precast concrete planters in this area. Details of the bench and trash container have been provided, but we need to see what exactly these planters will look like and whether they will meet the intent of the ordinance. Uh, sometimes we don't want the applicant to take a generic plastic planter or something that might not survive the vigors of being outside. So the details of the planters need to be provided. With regard to detention pond, there is going to be no detention pond on the site. Detention is being provided to their underground drainage system. And we defer to the township engineer and Wayne County with regard to that issue. A tree removal permit is not required because no trees are being proposed to be removed at this time. With regard to lighting, the plan proposes a total of 38 fixtures, which include wall and pole mounted lights. Maximum permitted light pole height is 25 feet, and the plan has been revised in order to meet the maximum height. All details have been provided, and the fixtures and the shielding meets ordinance requirements. With regard to architecture and building details, the applicant has submitted elevations for all facades of the building. As they previously mentioned, a portion of the existing building is being demolished, and the remaining portion is just going to be finished. The structure is constructed of concrete masonry units, 
which are to be patched, repaired, and painted. This building was constructed really a long time ago. I don't know the exact date, but maybe that we can, can clarify that. It is in need of some enhancement. We had recommended initially, and we continue to recommend that the applicant consider some facade enhancement, at least on the south facade that faces the I-94 service drive with regard to improving the building's appearance. Just the dealerships that are constructed these days have a much higher level. When the applicant is investing so much money in landscaping, paver walkways, and just making the site look so much nicer from the service drive, a little enhancement of the building facade will go a long way towards tying the whole site together. A dumpster enclosure that is currently located on the northeast side of the building will be repaired once the existing portion is demolished. With regard to fencing, the plan shows a six foot tall chain link black vinyl fence within the rear and side yards. Previously, the front yard too had a six foot high fence, which is not permitted. The applicant has reduced the height of the fence to 2.5, but it continues to remain chain link. Chain link fence is not permitted in the front yard. The applicant had indicated their willingness to comply and said they would discuss it at the planning commission meeting. However, when a revised plan is submitted, it must show a decorative and an ornamental fence in the front yard. With regard to signs, the site currently has a monument or come pole sign along its I-94 North Service Drive, and it has been shown on the plan. There is also wall signage shown. Uh, details of the wall sign and the pole sign need to be provided in order for us to determine that it complies with the ordinance. With regard to the other minor details on this project, the plan shows a propane gas tank for refueling of the RVs. And the tank is to be proposed placed on a concrete pad with screening fabric and chain link fence around it. Uh, I think I know what that means, but we actually need to see a detail of what exactly the screening fabric within a chain link fence is going to look, whether it's durable enough and whether it complements the appearance of the rest of the site. The special land use criteria for this project that already discussed. So our recommendation at this time, the applicant has met with us for a staff review and has subsequently made multiple changes to the site plan. So most of the staff review comments have been satisfied. There are still a few items that remain to be addressed. However, nothing that cannot be done at the time of final site plan approval. Therefore, we are comfortable recommending preliminary site plan approval for the site plan subject to the following uh, nine conditions. First would be review and approval of the emergency access and circulation plan by the fire department and township engineer. Second would be installation of concrete curbing along all paved or parking areas, unless the applicant demonstrates that the water quality would be substantially improved by foregoing such curbing. Submission of planter details and a colored rendering of the proposed landscape island with pavers and amenities. A review of the stormwater detention system by the township's engineer in Wayne County. Consideration of facade enhancements, including change of colors, addition of bands uh, or a cornice to the building to improve its appearance. Provision of a fence compliant with the ordinance in the front yard. Submission of area, height, lighting, and other details for the existing on-site signage. Details of the screening fabric around the propane tank. And finally, special land use approval by the Township Board of Trustees. The map that you see, uh, the plan that you see on your screen, Director Powers has actually highlighted all of the areas and all of the conditions that I just mentioned to be added as conditions of preliminary site plan approval. I would be happy to answer any questions or expand on any concerns that you might have. Thanks, Ms. Prishnan, good review. If it's all right with everyone, I'd like to go directly to Fishbeck's review for the engineering and hear from Mr. Kamer. And then we'll see what questions and comments you have. Okay, um, it's good to see everybody. Um, thank you, uh, Carol, for uh, sending it my way. Um, so to give a little overview for everybody, um, we have reviewed, um, I think, three different sets of plans from the engineer for Camping World here. And the letter that you will most likely be seeing is dated April 13th. Um, now, in discussions with um, Director Powers, we felt comfortable in leaving this letter as is 
um, relative to the revised site plan um, dated March 31st, after reviewing the site plan that was dated May 29th, because there were no significant changes made and had no, in, no impact to the engineering and feasibility of the project. So this letter will um, go as a uh, approval for both the March 31st plans and the May 29th plans, um, as mentioned in the email to Director Powers. With that, um, I'd like to just remind everybody as we go through preliminary site plan, Fishbeck examines and reviews the feasibility of the engineering aspects of the site design, but does not conduct a full engineering review until the engineering plans are submitted. Uh, due to the nature of this job, because it is a demolition and the remaining building staying intact, minimal aspects of the infrastructure are changing. And the minor things that we looked at um, with these site plans included the reconstruction of the existing storm sewer system, um, including a new proposed underground storage facility and a pump station, and the re and a new construction of a sanitary service lead that uh, will supply the for the dumping station um, and the refueling station, as Ms. Krishnan uh, mentioned. I will go through a couple of comments on uh, the water, the sanitary, and the storm, um, and then we'll open up to any questions that anybody has. So currently, the site is serviced by a publicly owned 12-inch ductile iron water main running east and west along the north side of the I-94 service drive, and an 8-inch ductile iron water main connection to the fire hydrants on the north side of the building um, that are privately owned by Camping World. Um, this will remain a privately owned line because it is now within the uh, secure section of uh, the proposed site. And the other improvement that they are making on the site is they are adding a 0.75 inch copper water service from the building to the RV parking lot station. Um, and they have in indicated that the building does not have fire suppression, a fire suppression system, and that the plans don't indicate any other modifications to the water system. Um, at this time, there are no major changes to the water system on site. As far as sanitary service goes, there is a private eight inch clay sanitary sewer line that runs north and south along the west property line. And it runs into the 10 inch publicly owned sanitary sewer that runs east and west along the I-94 service road in front of the property. Um, per the discussions with the applicant and the township water and sewer department, the township uh, or the eight inch, clay, eight inch clay sanitary sewer line um, was originally built with the intention of being a privately owned. However, it, it is, there are no, I'm sorry, eight inch publicly owned sanitary sewer. However, there are no current easements um, on this line and it is privately owned. The plans indicate that the existing private eight inch sanitary line um, will remain as such. And that is what the connection is to the building currently. The major change to these plans, obviously, as we add a parking lot um, area and paved area, as well as removal of some of the storm or some of the uh, building, is gonna be the storm system. Currently, um, records indicate that the storm runoff from the existing site is collected through a system of roof drains, catch basins, and an existing storm sewer network that outlets <clears throat> into the open roadside ditch along the north side of the I-94 service road. The applicant is proposing to modify the existing stormwater system by constructing several additional catch basins and a uh, basins with 12 inch concrete uh, pipe. And then the inlets will be captured in a stormwater runoff system, underground system, as Ms. Krishnan said, uh, that will go into um, an outflow from a flow restrictor into the proposed pump station and then discharge into the existing stormwater channel um, that it currently discharges to. 
we've had conversations with the applicant that although their plans seem um, to meet the requirements of Van Buren Township, that they must submit to the Wayne County Department of Public Services for a stormwater management review. And they have indicated that they submitted back in November of 2019. And I know the applicant was still as of May having trouble um, getting um, answers or having communication with Wayne County um, as to where their review process stood. Um, so maybe at the end of this, the applicant can um, give us a little update as to where they stand with Wayne County. Uh, but in general, the basic idea of their stormwater system and how it collects and how it discharges meets the requirements of Van Buren Township at this time. And um, as they get into more heavy engineering uh, plans, we will review them further um, as soon as Wayne County gives them their comments and uh, indicates if there's any changes that need to be made um, along those lines. Um, we had some minor uh, paving and grading comments on site, um, mainly with detail grades for ADA compliance and a few items um, along those lines. But again, at this point, um, we just are reviewing for engineering feasibility and we are recommending that the Planning Commission grant Camping World preliminary site plan approval for engineering feasibility, subject to the comments uh, listed in our letter uh, dated April 13, 2020. And with that, if there are any questions, I'm happy to, uh, to answer any. And I guess the only question that I would have for the applicant is uh, where their, um, the current uh, Wayne County uh, process is um, with their review. So thank you, everybody. Great, thanks, Mr. Cameron. Good overview and helping us understand where we're at. Um, before we ask the applicant to answer the Wayne County question and hear other questions and comments, I just want to note that the fire inspector from Van Buren Fire Department has also submitted a letter and all items listed in his letter have been addressed within the site plan. So we're clear there for preliminary. So let's ask the applicant if they can give us an update on Wayne County engineering um, submission. Let's we'll see what questions and comments we have from commissioners. Um, yeah, this is Paul Slukangas here again, um, and I do have an update. Uh, we were finally able to kind of get a hold of someone. Um, let's see here. It was, um, I believe it was last Thursday at the Wayne County office, and we tracked down a review. I think it was the review was issued sometime in mid-February, I believe, and uh, somehow it got lost in translation uh, with everything going on, but we were able to track that down. Uh, we got a, a review comments. Um, it appears it's just some minor things that uh, I believe we'll be able to take care of with the, uh, you know, with the final site plan submittal or the final construction drawing uh, documents. There's nothing that that uh, appears it will substantially change the design um, of the underground detention system. Uh, there's nothing re related to sizing or anything like that. So um, I don't believe there's any site plan implications from any of those comments. Great. Congratulations on a Wayne County review with only minor changes. And if you'll make <laughs> sure that we get a, that you get a copy of that over to Mr. Kamer and Fishbeck, that would be great. <laughs> All right. I'm going to ask for questions or comments from the commission for the applicant, for staff, for McKenna or Fishbeck. Anyone? Um, Madam Chair, this is Medina Atchison. Yes. Mr. Atkinson. Um, I would like to ask a question. I believe it would be to uh, Mr. Paul Kamer uh, regarding um, the water quality um, in regard to the applicant wanting to modify uh, the curbing. I wanted just some additional detail as to how the water quality would be improved or not. Any kind of information? Yeah, so the water quality, the, the way that the site currently drains is everything 
Um, typically, curb and gutter is set up so that obviously you collect from, you have sheet flow that collects at your curb and gutter and then um, runs into curbside drains or catch basins. The current or existing layout as it is now, all flow flows interior, interior. So it goes from the edges of the parking lot and flows interior to their site into catch basins that are in the middle of the parking lot. By adding curb and gutter around the outside of the lot, you're not necessarily going to improve any water quality. And really there would be no major change to water quality because the curb and gutters would have to be tilted away from the gutter or away from the curb itself so that all water that would hit them would flow away from them and into the catch basins that are located on the inside of the parking lot. So as far as water quality, I don't see a major difference in whether or not curb and gutter is added or not. Now from a, an engineering or, or even a, a public safety aspect, I know we, will require curb and gutter due to, um, because the township doesn't want bumper blocks. You don't want cars driving into the grass and the, the landscape spacing. Um, however, the areas that we're discussing on the outside are more for RV parking and staging and not necessarily within the public sector of this um, particular site. But I would like to you know, as, as Ms. Krishnan said, I would like to sit back and, and discuss with the planning um, consultant and, and director power to see, you know, if there's something that, that we collectively, you know, or, or I'm not understanding or, and at, at least understand as far as what the, the ordinance is that, um, that they're referring to before I say that it, you know, should be or, or could be make a huge difference. But from an engineering and a site runoff, there is no major um, major difference in that aspect. Okay, thank you. If Any Commissioner Atchison? If oh, I may I did add to that, Chairperson? Sure, Ms. Krishnan. Yes, uh, in response to um, Paul's comment and Commissioner uh, Atchison's comment, Curb and gutter is typically required at the periphery of all paved areas on sites to protect the landscape areas. Typically what happens in winter when there is snow piled up without curb and gutter, when your RVs and your vehicles are turning, they don't know where the pavement ends. So you end up having deep ruts in the abutting landscape areas, abutting green areas, and curb and gutter has always been required to give the site a finished appearance and define the edges of the circulation drive. It's never really been waived on any of the sites we have reviewed. And the only option the ordinance gives for its waiver is if water quality substantially improves. Uh, in this case, the township engineer is saying it's not really material to the water quality. It's not gonna make any difference. So I don't think it meets the only test given under the ordinance for the planning commission to be able to with it. So I, I just want to provide insight from how you have reviewed all other site plans and what the requirement, the reason why the requirement is in the ordinance in the first place. Great, mm -hmm. thanks, that's helpful. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else right now, Ms. Atchison? No, I just want a clarification on that as to what was creating this um, improved water quality. Thank you. Thank you. Other Questions or comments from the commission? Through the chair, um, I, I would, uh, if I can, just add to the comments um, where you might see this applied in, in uh, our consultants may have touched on this also, but um, curb and gutter is also generally designed to convey water quickly off of a site. Whereas um, water quality may come into play if there's a specific design for something like bioretention where the water can filter through a uh, a landscaped basin within a parking area uh, where you have uh, directed flow or sheet flow into a designed um, landscape surface where, where the curb is removed to allow for that. So that's the kind of thing I think we would all want to see a specific solution quantified to show 
how water is moving into an area where maybe plants soak some of it up or, or there's a infiltration trench that, that slows the flow of water and catches some of the pollutants. That's the kind of uh, role removing curb and gutter could have. Uh, but without a specific design, it's hard to see how uh, simply not having the curb would improve water quality. I think that's one of the things that we're looking at in this case. Great, thanks. That is a good clarification on what the intention of the ordinance and any exception to the ordinance could be. All right, Commissioner. Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner Jar. Is the applicant planning on pursuing the a water quality enhancement report? Let's see if the applicant has an answer for that right this time. Oh, can you still hear me? Yes, now I can hear okay. you. Okay, this is uh, Paul again here. Um, I have not spoken uh, specifically with Derek about this um, in quite some time. I would just say that the reason we were proposing foregoing the perimeter curbing around the, the RV inventory storage areas was as uh, Mr. Cam Cameron mentioned, um, the site really basically, you know, drainage sheet flows into our site from the perimeter areas, the landscape areas uh, adjacent to the pavement. And uh, installing a six inch curb and gutter uh, you know, a six inch tall curb with a gutter pan adds cost to the project, but it also creates some, I don't think there's any grading issues that couldn't be resolved, <clears throat> but the current site does not have perimeter curbing around it. So, um, I mean, I guess we'd have to look at the, relook at the grading around there, uh, make sure that we can still maintain that sheet flow above what would now be a six inch tall curb as opposed to just the, the pavement. Uh, six inches below that. So uh, probably not no major engineering issues with doing the perimeter curve, but that's just a little background on, on I guess, why we were looking to forego that. Thank you so much. Commissioner Jar, anything else? No, thank you. I'm going to um, jump ahead of some of the other commissioners and say we have some outstanding questions on the preliminary review from um, McKenna. So ask the applicant if they have anything to respond to on either the facade enhancements or the fencing and the stroke. Uh, Mr. Matter or Mr. Tulakangas respond to those issues in, in the review letter. I was waiting for, uh, for Derek to chime in on the facade. Uh, it's more of a building architectural um, item. Um, I'm not sure, that's not in the current plan to do facade improvements to the building. Um, I think that's something that could be discussed further, but I, that's not in the current, I guess, uh, proposal for site plan approval. So I don't know if Derek's still on the line, if he has any other comments on that. But I, I would just say from Camping World's perspective, the origins of this project where they just wanted to, you know, basically mill and replace the parking lot. Uh, and then it's, it's just, it's evolved and grown in terms of scope and size. So they were, I guess, I think they were trying to, to minimize other, other improvements. Uh, and then I'm sorry, what was the other uh, uh, question that you were looking at? Yeah, these are site plan review questions and, and not necessarily engineering. So it may be just that we will leave them um, these questions of facade enhancement, fencing, um, in, in compliance with the ordinance, and mm -hmm. also screening fabric around the propane tank. We can leave those in the preliminary letter as to be answered before final. Okay. 
Yeah, I would say, you know, the I think with the, the fencing issue, um, so the I think there, there was a, still a question about the chain link fence, which is currently shown on our plans. I think basically if that's, I think there was some gray area in the zoning ordinance uh, at least that's how I read it, that said that uh, the planning commission may be able to approve a chain link fence. But if that's not the case, I, I believe that Camping World is willing to do a decorative fence uh, in the entire front yard, if that's a requirement. Great, that's helpful, thank you. I'll ask again, um, commissioners, any other questions or comments for applicant or staff? Anyone in the audience? This is Derek. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. This is Derek Matter. Hi, Hi Mr. Matter. Um, we we do not have any we do not have any opposition to uh, providing a um, ornamental fence along the front yard um, at right. all. Um, as far as the facade, um, I, I will discuss with our architect um, because this is a CMU building. I mean, we're already spending a pretty significant amount of money on this property. Uh, any any more improvements is just pushing us right to our limit on uh, on costs on this project. So I I will creatively discuss this with them and uh, see if we can't come up with a solution that satisfies the council. Great, I appreciate that, and I also think um you know you might have some uh, benefit from talking with staff and and with the uh, planners. You know sometimes just color it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, a major facade improvement. Something we're looking for something to break up an expansive wall, and they can go over with you some of the um, solutions that have been used in the council successfully previously. Madam Chair, I think we do have plans to paint the building. Okay, great. Yes, Miss Krishnan, uh, we are happy to work with Mr. Matter and Mr. Tulikandas to come up. We don't. Our recommendation for facade improvement was not intended to take the project beyond the scope of whatever their financial um, plan was. So we'd be more than happy to discuss with them any enhancements that the architect can make towards improving the building also when they're putting in so much investment into the rest of the site. We'd be happy to work with them and bring something by the time it comes back for final site. Great. Great, thank you both. That sounds like we're on our way to a, a compromise that'll keep everyone happy. All right, if there's nothing else, are we ready for a motion on preliminary site plan approval for Camping World? Madam Chair. Mr. Kelly. I'd move to grant preliminary site plan approval to the applicant Camping World for the site located at 43646 North Interstate Service Drive based on the analysis and subject to the conditions detailed in the McKenna letter dated June 18th, 2020, the Fishback letter dated April 13th, 2020, and the Van Buren Township Fire Department letter dated um, February 5th, 2020. Great. Support. Support. Mission Board and support. Any discussion on the motion? Then this is a roll call vote, please. Joan Franzoy? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Donald Boynton? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Medina Atchison? Yes. Jerry Budd? Yes. Carol Thompson? <laughs> yes. So thank you, gentlemen, for participating and sharing uh, your insights with us. And we look forward to seeing you back for final. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll move to item three under new business. This is zoning ordinance amendments, the C local business district amendment, proposed amendments to add clarifications in order to distinguish between commercial and residential and non-commercial land uses in the C local business district with respect to maximum building size and clarifying restrictions on dwellings in non-residential zoning districts. So director powers, you wanna bring us up to date on where we're uh, where we've arrived at with uh, a process that has been going on for a while now. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, so I would like to provide a broad overview on this topic and uh, some of the history and some of the insights that we've shared um, in, in a partnership with Vidya Krishnan. Uh, we, we can go over our thoughts together. Um, 
I will say that the planning commission first took up this topic in a discussion on March 11th at their regular meeting. Uh, it has also reviewed this at the most recent meeting on June 10th. And so it's a topic that has been reviewed uh, several times, but it behooves us to go over it again um, to kind of ground everybody and, and get everybody up to speed. So uh, this is a topic that uh, certainly is related uh, to a uh, private development. There's no, um, no doubt that this zoning district includes um, a use that's being con uh, potentially considered, uh, but it also relates to other aspects of the C zoning district. So when we looked at this zoning district in more detail uh, earlier this year, we did see that there's a need for clarification on a, a very important aspect of how this district was written uh, in response to some of our research. So there are very few references to building size limit in the Van Buren Township Ordinance, Zoning Ordinance. Um, as uh, Vidya Krishnan says in her report, there are references to uh, distinguishing warehouses from distribution centers and references to uh, size limits for certain accessory uses. Uh, but when you see something like the C zoning district where there are specific uh, limits to building size, you have to ask the question, why are those limits in place? Uh, and what we found is that um, if, if use intensity is measured by uh, things like car trips, uh, parking spaces, uh, intensity of traffic to and from the site, and if uh, use intensity is a factor of building size, then it really makes sense to limit the size of commercial zonings especially, and especially in a zoning district that's intent is to be uh, serving the local population. So in that sense, it does make sense for certain commercial land uses, things like retail and restaurants. Uh, building size absolutely relates to the intensity of a use and uh, the, the trips to and from a site. And there's some uh, trip generation figures in your packet that speak to that aspect of this uh, to show the comparison between certain commercial and non-commercial land uses. And even among commercial land uses, there are some that are much lesser intensity than others. Uh, your, your standard uh, office building, which um, certain offices are permitted in the commercial zoning districts, will have a much lower intensity than retail or restaurant space. Um, so in that sense, the use of building size as a limiter on uh, use intensity for our what should be lowest intensity commercial zoning district um, may apply more to commercial land uses than to other permitted uses in that zoning district, uh, including things like schools, of course, including things like senior housing, uh, but including things like public utility buildings, uh, uh, adult daycare center, uh, instit other institutional uses that are permitted in that zoning district. That cap on building floor area we have found um, just does not need to be in place as a limiter on use, especially when, when the planning commission and the township board have uh, made specific efforts to, to verify that certain land uses, even if uh, they may uh, fall into a certain category are important to apply in many zoning districts, like some of the uses that are being talked about here. So things like schools and things like senior housing are permitted in multiple zoning districts. Um, it just so happens that in this case, there is a, a, a limit on building size that we don't think applies to non-commercial zoning districts or should apply to non-commercial, uh, excuse me, commercial uses or should apply to commercial uses. So that is sort of bringing us up to speed on the intent of why we are revisiting this and why we think it's important to clarify what's in the zoning ordinance. Um, of course, when uh, ordinances are written, there is also a uh, clause when, when new ordinances come in that repeal uh, conflicting language. But we do think that this is an important uh, clarification to make even in the underlying zoning ordinance uh, to just make sure that it's clear the intention of building size limits in the C com uh, local commercial zoning district um, are, are really for those commercial land uses. On a related note, um, speaking of the inter interaction between non-commercial uses and commercial zoning districts, we also 
uh, found that there is a reference to limits on uh, dwellings in non-residential zoning districts, including the commercial zoning districts. We think it's important also to clarify that uh, dwellings or living space in, um, if it's permitted as a permitted use by right or by special land use, as may be the case for certain land uses, uh, that there should not be a restriction on uh, dwellings in, in non-residential zoning districts. There may be some districts where you have a, a land use like senior housing where uh, there would be dwellings in that land use and, and therefore there shouldn't be a, a prohibition of uh, dwellings in non-residential zoning districts in those cases. So that those two things, primarily the building size, but also addressing this issue of dwellings in, in uh, non-residential zoning districts, uh, we feel are important to clarify and formalize with text amendments to the zoning ordinance. Um, that's sort of a start to finish broad overview. I will defer again to our uh, planner, Vidya Krishnan, to uh, if she'd like to recap her, uh, her summary report, which was also provided at the last meeting, uh, or otherwise to turn this over to the planning commission to uh, discuss in greater detail. So with that, I'll uh, defer to Vidya. Thank you, Director Power. Um, I think that was an excellent summary of the history of why this amendment is before you. Um, I don't think I have anything much to add except to make a statement that when a district, a zoning district is formulated, the beginning of the district has got a statement of intent or a statement of purpose. In case of the C district, which is a local business district, it is intended to serve, it was originally intended the way it is written to facilitate businesses that serve the local area. But over time, as the planning commission is aware, uses change, new uses are discovered, which are not anticipated for at the time the zoning ordinance was written. At the time the original statement of purpose for C was written, there was no such thing as senior housing as a category or a use by itself. Some of the uses are just recent, in recent years, we have had more uh, uses come up such as assisted living. Even 10 years ago, having drive through uh, pharmacies was a brand new thing. When you spoke about pharmacies, it was always a store. The idea of driving through and picking up your prescription was unheard of. The ordinance had to be changed to accommodate such a use. Similarly, senior housing, assisted living, memory care, these type of uses are relatively new as far as planning goes. When the planning commission and the board of trustees worked on and adopted the senior housing ordinance, there was extensive discussion as to which districts you want to allow this in. If the commissioners recollect, we even discussed whether it should be allowed in the light industrial district, whether it should be allowed in this. And after pruning and removing all these districts, the districts where senior housing is permitted as a special land use, C was decided as being one of the appropriate districts. In order to ensure that the neighborhoods are not affected and the existing properties are protected, the Planning Commission and Board of Trustees made the use across the board as a special land use. It is not a principal permitted use in any district. So safeguards were put in place in anticipation that if a use goes in a variety of districts, the Planning Commission and the board has always got control in dictating and controlling the narrative of how the use actually does not go in disturbing the area where it is located. So at this time, the amendment that we are proposing to the C district, while on the surface it might appear that it is intended to address a specific project, that was not the intent. The amendment is intended to address a clarification that needs to be made that was brought to light when a project came about. It was overseen until then. So this is just the clarification we are making, whether the specific project in question is there on the horizon or not. We believe this is a clarification that needs to be made to the audience. Uh, Director Powers and I would be happy to answer any other questions you might have. As he mentioned, we have discussed this multiple times at the Planning Commission and given a detailed history, including all supporting data that you had asked for to show exactly what the trips generated and the intensity of the uses might be. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Krishnan. We'll go right to questions or comments from the commission before there's any action on this. Anyone? 
Anyone in the audience? Director Powers, do we have anyone? I do not see any new chat items or hands raised regarding this topic. All right, we have spent extensive time discussing it. We have asked for additional research and received it. And it seems to make great sense as we move forward, both in keeping our commercial districts and in adding some of the new uses that we are proud to welcome to Van Buren Township. So is there a motion to make a recommendation? Madam Chair, Commissioner this Atkinson. is Lisa Atchison. Yep. I am proposing that uh, we make the recommendation to the Township Board that they consider Zoning Ordinance Amendment C, Local Business D District amend Amendments, uh, proposing that we add clarification in order to distinguish commercial and residential non-commercial land uses in the C local business district with a with respect to maximum building size and clarify restrictions on dwellings in non-residential zoning districts. Thank, thank you. Is there support? Support. Support. I'll take Commissioner Kelly for support. Any discussion on the motion? It's a roll call vote, please. Medina Atchison? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Donald Boyton? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Joan Franzoy? Yes. Sherry Budd? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. Thank you. So that recommendation will go forward to the Township Board. Um, we're to item four on our agenda, and this is a temporary land use approval. The applicant, Atchison Ford, is requesting a renewal of their temporary land use permit to park, lease, turn in vehicles and new vehicle inventory. The property is located at 8705 Belleville Road in Van Buren Township. It is the east side of Bel Belleville Road and just north of Tyler Road. Madam Chair. And Mr. Atchison. Hi, my name is Medina Atchison. I am, um, as you know, married to the applicant, so I am going to recuse myself from this meeting. I'm going to put myself on mute. Um, please forgive me for not being seen tonight. I don't know what has happened with my Zoom, but I am, I am here, um, so I will be muting myself. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Atkinson. Actually, to recuse yourself, it's a request from you, and then I need a motion and support for the commission to accept your request. So is there a motion, please? Madam Chair. Take Commissioner Boyton. I'll take motion and support from Commissioner Kelly. And we'll do a quick roll call vote, please. Sherry Budd? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Donald Boyton? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Joan Franzoy? Yes. Carol Thompson. Yes, so thank you, Ms. Atchison, um, for your recusal. And I'm sorry that we didn't get to see you, even though we were lucky enough to get to hear you tonight. Um, we'll have a short presentation. Um, do we have uh, the applicant or is it staff just uh, reminding us what the original approval was? Uh, I will defer primarily to Director Best, but I just want to note that I invited uh, the applicant uh, to this meeting, and I do see a 734 uh, number. I'm not sure if that is Mr. Atchison, um, but if not, it looks like it may just be uh, Director Best giving the report. No, it's me. This is Craig Atchison. I'm on the phone. That is me. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Atkinson. Is there anything you would like to um, inform of in this application? No, I just like, I, I appreciate you guys getting me on the agenda. Um, you know, it's kind of business as usual going over, over there for the, since I, what I've been doing the last couple of years. I'm uh, parking cars. Sometimes you'll see there's quite a few on there. Sometimes they're not, and that kind of depends on my business. Um, just trying to do some improvements to the lot this year. I've you know, I've been mowing it. I'm right now in the process of getting um, bids to replace all of the fencing around because it really needs to be repaired. 
So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. And that's really about it. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to ask, answer them. Great, thanks so much. We'll go right to Director Best and what the recommendation is from staff. Thank you very much. So um, Atchison Ford is requesting renewal of their temporary land use permit for temporary parking and storage of vehicles at 8705 Belleville Road. Uh, for those of you that know, this is just north of Armstrong's ice cream there on, on Belleville Road, north of Tyler. Uh, per the zoning ordinance, <clears throat> temporary uses that operate for more than seven consecutive days do require planning commission approval. The following items are the approval standards uh, for the township and we consider these when we write our recommendation. These are adequacy of parking. Currently there is adequacy of parking for the temporary use that needs to be done there. Uh, the fire marshal has inspected the area and it will not create a situation where there's a problem with the parking of those cars. There's an existing gravel parking lot there so the site does have adequate drainage. Um, <clears throat> compatibility with surrounding land uses. The proposed, the current temporary use that's out there and the proposed continued use is located next to vacant land to the west, park area to the east, private recreational ice cream shop to the south, and manufactured housing community to the north. Uh, it is anticipated that there's a potential for incompatibility to the manufactured housing community to the north, um, but there are several factors that mitigate those issues. There's existing vegetation buffer, there is um, that it provides for privacy. Uh, the parking of storage and vehicle storage of vehicles is set off the road 20 feet, uh, and the vehicles in the front row are parked backwards to keep the lights out of there, uh, out of the roadway. Um, the site height and type of construction of proposed building and structures uh, are in relation to the surrounding site. There's no building or structures. Uh, the the um, the applicant actually uh, removed the existing structure that had been there from the previous land use. Um, they are repairing the severely damaged fence that's out there right now um, that was planning on staying on, on the site uh, if the temporary land use wasn't there. Uh, so they are gonna be repairing it with uh, the black uh, decorative uh, fence that'll be similar in use to what's being removed. Uh, sufficient setbacks from the road right-of-ways and lot lines are being maintained. There are no existing utilities on site, so at the, the standard for adequate utilities does not apply. Uh, there is no building or uh, uh, need for utilities to the site at this time. Trash disposal and site cleanup. For the last two years, Atchison Ford has kept the site clean and well-maintained, so there's not, not an issue there. Sanitary facilities, no sanitary facilities are provided because there are no employees housed at the site. They drive in, they drop off or pick up a car and they drive off. Hours of operation, uh, we have not seen any problems with the previous two years hours of operation. Uh, outdoor lights and signs, there are currently no signs on, there's an old existing sign on the site from the previous business, but there are no outdoor lights being utilized at this time. Um, there are no other licenses or permits required for this. Uh, there should not be an increase in noise, odor, dust, or glare. Uh, fi uh, fire lanes, fire protection and security, the fire marshal has approved uh, this temporary use from their perspective uh, in the following the current practices that they've been using the last two years. Uh, the roads in the minute vicinity are major township roads and the temporary use over the last two years has, we've not noticed any significant impact on traffic traffic or flow volumes from, because of this temporary use there. Uh, there's no performance bond necessary for the temporary use. We do not find any additional concerns that would impact public health safety or general welfare. And with that staff, uh, recommends that this, uh, the following. Temporary land use has been conducted for the last two years with no issues that have been brought to the attention of the township. The applicant has removed the existing uh, vacant building on the site and has taken extreme efforts, uh, vigilant efforts to keep the property well-maintained. 
Based on this and the review criteria mentioned above, staff is recommending approval for the temporary land use to continue uh, for the parking of uh, vehicles on the property at 8705 Belleville Road. This recommendation is based on this review due to dated June 17th, 2020, and is subject to the following conditions. The applicant shall maintain the setbacks as discussed from the front side and rear in the report. Vehicles parked in the front row on Belleville Road shall be parked uh, with their rear of the vehicle toward the road to keep uh, headlights from uh, impacting traffic. The area will be maintained clean. The hours operations shall mirror the hours of the operation at Atchison Ford. That any exterior lighting or signs be approved and reviewed by the Director of Planning and Economic Development for consistency with the zoning ordinance prior to their installation and that the temporary land use permit would expire June 26, 2021. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Director Best. Any questions or comments from the commission? Or any audience? This is a renewal of a successful permitted use. If there's nothing else to discuss, is there a motion to approve? Madam Chair. Mr. Boynton. I move that we grant the applicant Atchison Ford requesting renewal of their property land use permit to park lease turn in vehicles and new vehicle inventory at um, 8705 Belleville Road, Van Buren Township, the east side of Belleville Road, north side of Tyler Road. Thank you. Support? Support, Madam Chair. Support. I'm not sure who supported. Is it Commissioner Jar? Commissioner Jar. Commissioner Jar. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> I thought I might have had more than one, but we'll take Commissioner Jar for support. And this would be a roll call vote, please. Joan Franzoy? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Donald Boynton? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Sherry Budd? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. Great. We wish you luck in the coming year at Atchison Ford and uh, both of your locations. We'll move on. All to right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Atchison. We'll move Thanks, on. Thanks. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Yep. You too. Um, and Commissioner Atchison can join back in if she is there and, and is ready to. Um, we are item five, adaptive outdoor retail and dining, a relaxation of certain regulations. This is being brought to us from staff. So Director Powers, how can we help you tonight? Thank you for letting me uh, bring this to your attention. This is a bit of an add on to our agenda for tonight. Um, this is specifically related to the unique situation we're finding that a lot of businesses are in due to the coronavirus pandemic. Um, there is a uh, struggle from businesses to determine how they're going to safely reopen in a way that allows them to uh, get back to their uh, operations where, where things are economically viable to continue. Uh, and as they try to do that, we find that many communities are trying to be creative and flexible with uh, regard to moving retail and dining space outdoors. So to the extent that we can here in Van Buren Township, we would like to do the same thing. Um, what we don't have is quite the same type of a uh, landscape that you would have in a place like downtown Belleville or downtown Plymouth, uh, where there's a, a very um, t small block tight group of uh, commercial streets with a downtown district but we certainly have uh, some room for there to be some creativity about how our businesses use their space. So uh, in normal times, what we would consider is that if a business wanted to permanently take uh, something like dining or retail outdoors, we would find a suitable zoning district for that and bring that use to the planning commission for review. Um, if there was a business that wanted to do that on a seasonal basis, uh, we would take that to the Planning Commission for review if it was longer than two weekends or longer than seven consecutive days. 
What I am asking in light of or in lieu of uh, the current situation is that the Planning Commission allows us to uh, relax some of the, the regulatory uh, items that go along with a temporary land use of that nature, namely that uh, if businesses want to move seating outdoors or retail space outdoors due to limits on indoor capacity, uh, that they be allowed to do so based on an administrative only review uh, for events that last as long as through the end of October. I'm also asking for the flexibility to waive fees for such users. Um, this is consistent with regional practices uh, that are being undertaken in various forms in various communities. Um, this is, uh, it seems to be vital for many restaurants, especially to get back up to speed, uh, to be able to uh, flexibly and quickly move uh, some of their activities outdoors. So uh, along with this process, it would look a lot like the typical temporary land use process from a, a uh, content standpoint. We would still make sure there is uh, purview from the fire department, from our uh, police department, and uh, over, oversight from a planning and zoning perspective as well. Uh, we would review that fire lanes are clear, that adequate minimum barrier-free parking spaces are available if restaurants move seating uh, out into parking lots. Um, and there would be a full site plan, that uh, a, uh, a full conceptual site plan that's submitted with any temporary land use application. I'm simply asking the Planning Commission for uh, their uh, concurrence to recommend that this, for this particular type of use, for uh, this year through October um, for land uses that are specifically responding to the need to economically recover from coronavirus uh, and move their normal act, uh, indoor activities outdoors uh, for the leniency for staff to review that and for the fees to be waived. Uh, so my request of you all is to consider a, uh, I do ask for a motion to consider forwarding a recommendation on this uh, to the township board in the form of either a policy resolution or an informational update that, uh, that has your support. As the advisory group on anything site plan or temporary land use related, we wanna make sure that we get your buy-in as well. Um, one other thing to note, this is not, uh, this is maybe related, but not uh, at all something that, that it's, it's formalized at this time. There, there is a effort to, to drive uh, something called social districts where communities are looking at, and, and the state legislature is looking at ways to uh, allow communities to designate entire areas uh, outdoors shared between businesses. Um, we're, not, we're not there yet, and I don't know if we will be as a community. Um, that is not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is on a case-by-case -case basis, allowing individual businesses as they request it to come in for a temporary outdoor seating and service or retail. Um, so I'm glad to take any questions, hear your comments. Um, I'm interested to hear what you have to say. And uh, maybe Director Best has some things to add about this as well. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll leave that up to the group, but I do look for a motion to, to concur with what we're trying to do. And, uh, and I would look to act on this with the Board of Trustees uh, if uh, as soon as July 7th at their regular meeting. So I will uh, leave it to that. Thank you. Thanks, Director Powers. Director Best, anything to add? Director. I think Director Powers did a great job uh, summarizing the, the concept. Um, I, I wanna break it down even simpler. Um, our businesses in the community are hurting uh, COVID-19 has done, an, has done a, a number on their uh, already uh, uh, smaller profit margins for getting people in with a 50% capacity. Uh, some of these businesses that have uh, been here for years and years and are strong members of our DDA in our community, they need another option. Other communities have looked to this option. We want to be able to move with speed to allow them to still follow the outdoor rules that you guys would follow, but allow the, the directors to do this administratively so we can get um, seats outside, 
take get people eating in these in our downtown our non-traditional downtown again eating at applebee's eating at don pesos eating at uh, twisted rooster these uh, having a sidewalk sale at belleville square these are all things that would increase the amount of people the chamber of commerce uh is uh have, we've talked to them briefly about this they're excited about this idea um we would, of course, keep the Planning Commission updated on all the uh, applicants that have come in and taken advantage of this, but it's also designed to be temporary. On October 31st, 2020, any of these permits that we believe we would issue as a temporary land use would expire. Um, and they would have to, if we're still in COVID, and I hope we're not, we would be coming back to this board again to ask for uh, potentially ask for relief again for these businesses comes the spring and summer of 2021. I hope I'm hopeful we won't, but this is to help our businesses now. Uh, we believe that this is some, a little thing that the township can, uh, the township planning commission and board can do to uh, really help our small business. And uh, frankly, everybody loves good food and loves our businesses. And we want to get people out there and, and get them enjoying our community again and um, waiting for the plan. Not that we don't want the planning commission, we're not going to follow, and not that we're not going to follow the rules, but waiting for the meeting might might be the the two, some those extra days to get it approved might put one of these businesses out of business. Uh, so we we want to be very cautious of that. So thank you. Thanks, Director Best. Good simplification of what is a complex problem. Questions or comments from the commission? Through the chair, I, I don't have a problem. I think we need to do all we can to help them. So I'm on board. Great, thanks, Commissioner Bud. Anyone uh, else? The, sure, Commissioner the, um, Yes, um, the only thing that I, I heard Dan and I heard um, uh, Matt both say that um, the business coming to them asking um, to do an outside tent sale or to have seating outside, can I just make a recommendation that we like try to seek them? Um, I don't know if you have the manpower. I mean, I would, I would help you. Um, but I would like to see that we reach out to them because our summer months um, and our dining outside or maybe having a tent, a sale outside, um, a sidewalk sale, um, our time frame is very short because of our weather here in Michigan. I would just recommend that we reach out to them. And when I say we, I'm talking about the township reaching out to these businesses that could potentially take their business outside um, to stay viable. That's my mm -hmm. only comment. Yeah, through the chair, I, I will tell you that the DDA and Dan Power have already started uh, contacting businesses and and um, seeing if they were interested. We've worked with the Chamber of Commerce. They put together a list of people who may be interested. Um, so we are actively looking for participants. Um, full knowing that you guys might say no, but we we wanted to get the ball rolling. So yes, that is exactly what we need to do, uh, Commissioner Atchison. It's an excellent idea. Uh, um this is Commissioner Atchison again. I just wanted to say that I am doing backflips. You can't see me right now, but I'm very happy that our our staff is being this proactive to help our businesses. That is a true partnership that I really, really appreciate. Good comments. Thanks, Commissioner Atchison. Anyone else? Or anyone in the audience? Sure, Commissioner Jar. Uh, Director Powers, you're seeking a motion on a recommendation. Was the recommendation included in the packet? I didn't see it. The recommendation is simply to relax the fee and, uh, well, actually, let me, let me clarify that even simpler. The, the recommendation with regard to the purview the Planning Commission normally has is to relax the requirement that you as a Planning Commission will review uh, temporary land uses for uh, outdoor sales or outdoor dining proposals for the next, uh, until October 31st. So it's a, it's a re real uh, recommendation to relax the uh, typical review requirement of the Planning Commission. And would that be for all temporary land use or 
how do you how do you spell out exactly which temporary land uses we're waiving our responsibility to review? So it is for outdoor dining and retail land uses uh, proposed by businesses that need to uh, make whole their typical occupancy by moving their activities outdoors. Where, where occupancy indoors is limited to 50% uh, businesses that specifically need to expand outdoors uh, for outdoor dining, for whatever their commercial use is, dining or retail. Okay. Got it. Got it. Anyone else? I'm hearing strong support. Is there a motion to make the recommendation to Township Board? Someone's this word. Is Madam Chair, you. can I make a can I make a an additional comment, please? Of course, Commissioner Jar. I'm I'm reluctant to jump in and, and make the motion, although I think the the idea is great. Uh, and and I think anything that streamlines this would be wonderful. It's hard for me to personally make the motion when I don't have it, uh, the exact text written down. Is there some way that we could quickly review a written recommendation before we, before we send that off to the township? I understand the meeting is soon and I understand we wanna move quickly. What could we do to speed that, pro that process up? Can we extrapolate the motion from the memo that came from Director Power? I, I think that's fair. If the Planning Commission is comfortable doing that, um, I would just, uh, and I'm not sure, I don't think I'm sharing my screen right now. I have it up on my screen. Um, but I would ask that the motion is simply that the Planning Commission um, consider forwarding a, a recommendation. And the recommendation is to temporarily relax the requirement of Planning Commission review for temporary land uses specifically for businesses to use outdoor dining and retail space due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic through October 31st, 2020. So if, there, if the Planning Commission is comfortable, I think this is an adequate motion uh, to make uh, to recommend to the Board of the Trustees. Madam Chair. Commissioner Boynton. I move that the Planning Commission considers forwarding a recommendation to temporarily relax the requirement of review for temporary land uses specifically for businesses to use outdoor dining and retail space due to COVID-19 through October 31st of 2020. That's it. <laughs> Commissioner, Commissioner Jar, I thought perhaps you were going to make the motion, but it looks like Commissioner Boynton got in front of you. Do you want to uh, weigh in on the motion for support? Or I can back off. <laughs> no, no, no sir, right. Commissioner, you did, you did a lovely job. <laughs> get too far afield here. Commissioner Jar, is that support? I'd like to hear uh, Commissioner Franzoy's thoughts on this. Okay, I need a second on the motion before there's a discussion. Is there someone willing I to support, support me? This is Medina Atchison. I support um, Mr. Boynton's uh, motion. Thank you. We have motion and support. Discussion on the motion, please. I think that it, that it is a good idea. I, I know that the restaurants are having a lot of trouble. People are, are leery to go. So if there's outside seating, I think that would be a big help for them. I'm all for it. Why? Through the, through the chair, um, if, if, if Dan could put back up that on the screen one more time, very quickly, um, if you look, the current motion is the what's in blue but the next uh, sentence on there is also uh, would also be critical in this motion because right uh, it would also add uh, that the review would still be done administratively 
and following the rules uh, set forth by public safety DDA and public services. Great. Thanks for the help, Director Best, and the words missing. So I will ask our uh, motion maker and support if they are willing to accept the additional second sentence in the second paragraph. Maybe you just want to refer to the memo dated June 23rd, 2020. Commissioner Boynton? Yes. Accept. Commissioner Atkinson, do you accept? Yes, and I just wanted to add also that uh, we were looking at um, I, the exact wording is the administrative fee. We, we would add a relief for that also because there's also additional expenses when you start doing outdoor sales and outdoor dining. There might be like um, a canopy and things that these businesses will have to incur some additional expenses due to COVID-19 right. and the outdoor seating. That's right. And I'm sure that the township board will consider that in their action, they are responsible for setting fees. So we have a motion in support uh, with a, an amendment that has also been motioned and supported. Any other discussion on the motion? All right. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Joan Franzoy? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Donald Boynton? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Medina Atchinson? Yes. Sherry Budd? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. So we send that motion forward um, with applause and uh, an appreciation to staff for being proactive, for being flexible and nimble. Good job, guys. We are to general discussion. Anyone have a general discussion item? We'll start with Director Powers. I my only discussion item is that I believe we are in position to have a regular meeting on July 8th uh, that will also be remote uh, and, and possibly on July 22nd that will also be remote. The state executive order is uh, authorizing remote meetings through the end of July and it's probably prudent for us to do so. Um, as we move forward, we'll try to keep um, having this uh, platform, you know, how, how to join it readily accessible to the public. Um, I believe we will have a master plan discussion on, uh, on the next agenda, um, and you'll see the, that on the agenda, of course. Uh, that is my only administrative update or scheduling update, but I do have a, uh, we had a comment earlier in the meeting that I think uh, Director Best was going to address. Yeah, there, there was a comment in the chat regarding uh from Mark K, who was one of our attendees tonight, asking who is responsible for taking care of the property on the former Harbor, our, uh, the Harbor Club golf course, the Harbor Hills golf course. Uh, currently the grass is very high out there because the golf course is not in operation. Um, uh, it's my understanding, I believe Mark has been contacting the township uh, for a couple days. Um, we have already, we had contacted the Habitat corporate, the Habitat company who owns Harbor Club. Um, they are aware of the um, requirements for cutting grass. They're supposed to cut grass uh, on property within 150 feet of any of the structures on their property. Um, uh, however, if they're not operating the golf course and they have an intent to have that part, because those are separate parcels, the golf course, if their intent is for those to be vacant, um, those gra that grass can stay high. Um, so we have been working with the Habitat company to find, uh, Habitat companies actually come to us with uh, potential uses for that property other than the golf course. Um, so they're trying to find a way to use that property that in a benefit for both their residents and the rest of the community. And as, um, as soon as uh, they have something a little bit more concrete and they're ready to talk about it and they let us know what they wanna do, uh, we can bring that to the planning commission for you guys to see. Um, it's a great question. Um, so Habitat Company is aware they have to cut the grass 150 feet from the structures on their parcel. Um, the golf course is closed and is most likely not going to be reopened. They don't have an intention of reopening the golf course at this time. Um, so they're looking for alternate uses and they're, they've actually hired a, uh, a renowned uh, uh, area, local landscape architect to work on this project for them. Um, so we'll see what happens in the in the bright future out there so hopefully that answers mark's question 
And if Great. not, he can contact me tomorrow at the office. Okay, thanks, Director Best. Anyone else, uh, general discussion item? Planning commissioners or audience? All right, hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Mr. Boynton, support. Support, Commissioner Jar. Commissioner Jar, support. Um, all in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. 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 Thank you. We're adjourned. Good discussions. Good presentation. Good night. Everyone. Thank you. Good night. Have a great night, everyone. And, uh...